Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hunky Vape. I'm your host, DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 26th of March, 2021, a.k.a. the Prevent Online Sales of E-Cigarettes to Children Act, EVE, a.k.a. the PACT Act Enforcement Curfew. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, today is the last day you will legally be allowed to buy electronic cigarettes, vape devices, tobacco harm reduction products, as well as any part component or accessory to those products from anyone who has not registered with the U.S. Attorney General and the ATFE and every tax agency, state tax agency, and local tax agency, and paid all the business license fees required by every location that has one, and found a private courier to deliver packages in compliance with the Jenkins Act, all to make sure the end user of these products pays the shakedown fees imposed by our mafia-like government organizations. Now, I follow the news very closely. Actually, I research the news every week and sometimes every day to dig up for the latest breaking news stories. Well, you know what? I got broadsided this morning when I came across a Reddit post because I thought I thought I ordered everything and I, that I wouldn't be able to get after this day. And even I was almost screwed royally for not thinking this all the way to the end. Yeah. You see, the PACT Act also applies to circuit boards. Yeah. And components that go into vapes. So I almost didn't get to order a DNA board. But because of this Reddit post that we're going to talk about today, I quickly jumped on the Evolve's website and placed my last second order. In fact, they already shipped my order, but we'll talk about that later. Moving on. Moving on to something even worse. Yeah. Remember a couple weeks ago when I reported that the Australian Retailers Association canceled a secret contract? Whoops. Because they found out that the money came from Big Tobacco? Whoops. Well, that story isn't over. And the tobacco money tentacles have now been traced to Athra. Oh, Jesus. And now their charitable organization status is under attack. Oh, Jesus. You know, next they're going to be going after Dr. Colin Mendelson. Or maybe even the vape and bogan. Goes to show you that, you know, if they can't beat tobacco harm reduction with junk science, they'll go after the loudest advocates personally. How about new? And let me tell you, when ants swarm... You know, anti-nicotine and tobacco zealots? Well, when they swarm, they catastrophically destroy everything to keep you away from safer nicotine products. <laughs> nicotine equals tobacco in their minds. So ban it. How about new? Speaking of banning nicotine, how about Cambodia banned all heated tobacco products and ENDS products this week? <laughs> hey, wait. Wait a minute, didn't they already do that back in 2014? Whoops. Yeah, yeah, they banned it back in 2014. Well, you know what? Since COVID is running around and people are still buying, you know, vapes and, and end products from social media contacts, well, we need to ban them again. And now this time I mean it, banned. What the fuck? <laughs> Moving on. There's a new poll done in Malaysia. Yeah, the new poll in Malaysia says that 80% of people, they want regulations for vaping products in Malaysia because unregulated products are bad. Must regulate those products. In other words, must regulate the products so that we can collect taxes and fees. Now cough up the cash, punk. We want our tax money. Tobacco harm reduction in Asia is under attack. You know, just like it is in Canada. Yeah. Canadian vapors are fighting a nicotine cap. And some of them are actually fighting a flavor ban right now. Well, since the fight isn't going so well and people are quitting smoking with vapes, Help Canada is not going to use social media influencers to target you. You know, to see things their way in a timely fashion. Ooh. Yeah. And it's not all bad news. Did you hear about Rhode Island? 
Nope. Yeah, Rhode Island is taking another look at vapes and might actually reverse the state's flavor ban. Yeah, and it was proposed by four Democrats. And it's marching along to potentially reverse the prohibitionist laws that aren't working. The prohibitionist laws that are costing the state coffers millions of dollars in lost tax revenue. Well, surprise, surprise, yeah. huh? Well, how about today? Florida lawmakers are working on vape regulations for the exact same reason. The governor vetoed the last time that they proposed anything. So this time we got a Republican that decided, well, we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to legalize this stuff because we need, we need to go in there and fix the federal tobacco 21 laws so that we're in compliance with them because our laws say 18. So while we're in there anyway, yeah, Senate Bill 1080 and House Bill 987 would correct Florida laws to comply with federal tobacco 21 laws. And formalize legally legally formalize vaping regulations in florida congratulations and no surprise the american cancer society isn't happy about this yeah and i got a reply for them but so what next i have an op-ed titled why i oppose any ban on vape flavors and a real clear health article titled Policymakers, stop ignoring the science on vapes. Ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here's our first article for today. Just letting everybody know if you have been sleeping or, I don't know, out of state or out of country on a holiday... This bozo over here. Today is the curfew. The curfew for the new law to stop the sale of electronic cigarettes to children because that's where the kids are buying them. Yeah. And this law is going to stop them. It is definitely going to stop them. Excuse me? Well... Wait till six months down the road when they find out that this law didn't do anything to the kids. Whoops. But it did push a bunch of people back to smoking combustible tobacco. I rest my case. However, this is the article. And there'll be a link in the description below if you don't know about it. But it includes every single part and component that goes into electronic cigarettes, electronic hookahs, electronic cigars, vape pens, advanced refillable personal vaporizers. I don't think I've ever seen anybody advertise it as such. Nope. Electronic pipes and the parts and accessories and components, the wire, the cotton, and even the circuit boards are covered by this law. And I didn't think about this. You know, I, I placed an order from Advanced Vape Supply. Advanced Vape Supply. I want to thank Mowgli Vapes for that, for directing me towards them. Got a hell of a deal. All their shit was seventy percent off. Shut up! So I ordered a bunch of wire, and a lot of the stuff that they already had pre-made were they were out of, so they didn't have any canthal. But I did get some nichrome, and I did get some uh, stainless steel, and I got some stainless steel wire so I can make my own coils. Well, I jumped onto Reddit this morning and Aww. this is what I had. This is what I saw. Aww. And I'm like, wait a minute, Evolve? I never, I never thought about that. You know, Evolve sells their boards so that you can do your own hobbyist activities and make your own mods. I mean, that's where the name came from. People modified things to make them work, to turn them into functional vapes. Well, I'm all about the crafting aspect of vaping, so I wanted to be able, someday down the road, to take a board, a DNA board, and convert one of my mods, when the board goes bad, into a DNA board. I mean, that would be awesome. Be able to take and make your own thing. I mean, the satisfaction you get, like, when you mix your own e-liquid, the satisfaction you get out of doing that, 
Oh, there's not, you can't, there's no words to sum it up. It's awesome. I wanted to do the same thing with a mod someday. I wanted to pull the guts out of it that weren't working and slap it a new board. I almost didn't have the opportunity to do that because of the PACT Act. Whoops. The regulations. Well, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. I'm just going to quickly go over what was contained in the letter that they sent out to their existing customers. It says, due to the PACT Act and related government actions, Evolve will be ceasing all direct-to-consumer sales on March 26th, the PACT Act Eve, or curfew, and closing the e-commerce portion of the website. We've never sent out a mailer like this before, but after March 26th, we will only sell DNA boards in quantity to business customers and will only sell Reflex and other devices through distributors and local vape shops. So if your local vape shop doesn't carry what you want, you're gonna to need to go in and ask them to start ordering things in. If they don't carry your line of juice, you need to go in there and say, hey man, I go through six bottles of this every month. Could you um, place an order for me? Get it in. I understand if you wanna mark it up, whatever, charge me 20 bucks or whatever for placing the order, whatever. I understand you need to make some money. Can you order me my stuff? Well, that's what you got to do now because the PACT Act is going into enforcement and I'm just waiting because Reddit's going to blow up. Facebook's going to be blowing up and all the other social media is going to be blowing up with people going, hey man, my, my online vape store is gone. What happened? Denied. Vaping world is changing as we see right before our eyes. Aww. Tomorrow's going to be a new day. A lot of the places are gone. My email's been blowing up this past week from all the different places I've ordered stuff from saying, hey man, the deadline, you got a deadline coming up. Here's 50% off. Here's 60% off. Here's 70% off. They're clearing their shelves. It's a fire sale. You want to destroy our business? Well, Evolve is not going away. The vast majority of their sales are business to business. And that's going to continue. It says that we feel we have a strong PMTA application submitted for Reflex with additional studies and trials are ongoing. For example, Reflex finally received its UL listing demonstrating product safety. We also have new products in the pipeline and are happy to continue to help any of our DNA customers with PMTA where we can. I wish we didn't have to stop selling direct. While it isn't a lot of our sales, Evolve was started by the hobbyist modder, me, him, Brandon Edward. And we care deeply about this segment of the community. However, we don't see a way around the twin attacks of ship anything and go to jail and $80 in paperwork and compliance costs for every $20 order. We hope you understand and we'll all keep fighting the fight together. Yes, Brandon, we do understand, but it doesn't change the facts. So if you didn't get this order in, well, maybe somebody has an extra one that they're willing to part with. <laughs> or maybe your vape shop will place the order for you. But even they said in this letter that they're going to be doing things in bulk. And there's going to be a lot of vape shops that are going to go, well, listen, man, they, they, they want me to order 10. You're the only person that's ever come in here, asked me for stuff. Aww. So there's a lot of uncertainty in the vaping community. And there will be for a little while until the dust settles and people reacclimate to the situation, the scenario that they have. Maybe some of these places like 8Vape that has procured the shipping and the compliance requirements, maybe they're going to start selling their stuff. Bullshit! Because they have private couriers. They're going to be able to comply with the PACT Act requirements of documenting everything, saving those records for the next five years. And as a company, they're big enough to do it. Bullsy, bullsy, bop, city bop. 
Only time will tell. Six months down the road, we'll find out what really ended up happening. There's no way to predict this. Or who's going to be left. Well, let's move on. Fantastic. This one, I just, my jaw dropped when I, when I saw this. I couldn't believe it. Garbage. Australia, this is all over your news. It's the goof of all time. Yeah, ABC has it. I found it in the Sydney Morning Herald. A couple other places. Get fucked. Metadata is what revealed this information to them. The little hidden code that's written in every single web page. Yeah. Well, the metadata reveals who the author was of the content. And some hacker was sitting there going and looking for the code. And this wasn't done by accident. I just want good news. There were people out there that were digging to try and find how far the tentacles convoluted into the advocacy community. Mm-hmm. Metadata reveals medical charity Athra received assistance from PR company linked to vaping campaign funded by Big Tobacco. Bullshit! A doctor's health promotion charity is unable to explain how metadata linked to a global public relations firm with ties to campaigns funded by tobacco, electronic cigarettes, and vaping interest ended up on his website. But wait! There's more! Yeah. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to actually read the content. I can't believe you've done this. I am not going to sit here and bash Dr. Mendelssohn. He's been a longtime advocate for the tobacco harm reduction community, for the vaping community. Another fine day in paradise. But the article outlines who this person was. They even went so far as to publish a picture of what he looks like. Yeah, blurring out everybody else's face. And naturally, can you face some unpleasant facts? This has moved into their government now. Aww. So, which means that um, their charitable status is now going to be questioned. <laughs> and they're going to have to explain every single dollar that they got. I don't want to answer the question. So that they could further investigate to see if anybody else that donated money to Athra has ties with Philip Morris. How about new? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm so scared. Guess who? <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, no, 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 hold on a minute. Move on to Cambodia. How about this in Cambodia? How about new? They already banned nicotine back in 2014. Whoops. This article comes from Filter Mag. Cambodia issues Asia's largest, latest, not largest, latest, nicotine prohibition. The only problem is Cambodia already banned nicotine back in 2014. It's already been prohibited. Oh, Jesus. Some local reports suggest that vapes remain available and that the ban has so far been widely ignored. Whoops. Well, yeah, because people don't want to go back to smoking deadly combustible tobacco. They want their vapes. They want their safer nicotine products. And I thought this was going to be a dull day. <laughs> Shut up. Well, their um, justification for this new ban is that the earlier guidelines did not cover heat, not burn products. Yeah, heated tobacco products. So we need to go in and revamp the laws again to ban it again and update the laws with the new technology yeah let's get this straight unbelievable it's like a drum that just doesn't stop it keeps marching along here's the uh, documentation and if you look at the date on this, it was the 25th of February, 2014. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. They already banned it. Leave me alone. Nope. But people don't pay attention to that. 
They want what they want. And if you have a prohibitionist agenda, you're a fool if you think that there isn't going to be a black market that's going to fill the void created by your prohibitionist laws. Because prohibition simply doesn't work. Never has. And it never will. We're running out of time. Let's go over to Malaysia. Well, there's a new poll that says 80% of Malaysians want regulations for their vaping products. <laughs> yeah. A recent survey on vaping showed a large majority of Malaysians want the government to take more action to regulate the industry in their country. The Malaysian Insights and Perspectives on Vape Survey, commissioned by the Malaysian Vape Industry Advocacy, is also showed that 76% of those polled think that the country's economy will benefit from these regulations. Well, yeah, because I don't know any government that imposes regulations strictly for the purposes of, you know, the safety of their residents. No. There's always, you know, fees, taxes, licenses. Yeah, those are always accompanying any regulation that is imposed on its people. It's a trap! Well, let's take a look at this chart. Malaysians say regulate vape. 5% were not sure that the government should take more action to regulate the vape industry. 15% said no. And 80% said, yeah, yeah, you need to regulate these products. Yeah, that's a good idea. Get fucked. Malaysian economy would benefit from regulation. 6% said, no, that's not going to help the economy. No. Regulations, they're not going to help. 18% said, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. And 76% said, yeah, regulations are good. Yeah, they always work. They always help. Get fucked. So let's, let's put some more regulations of the vape industry. How about taxation? Should taxes be imposed on vaping products? Well, according to the survey, it said 87% said that's a good idea. Yeah. And 13% said no. No, no, that's a bad idea. How about revenue from vaping products? And how they could be spent on education and the economy? 8% said no. No, that, that you shouldn't get any revenue from tax vapes, taxing vapes, no. And that, that wouldn't help, that wouldn't help the education and the economy. 18% said they weren't sure and 74% said, yeah, sure. Tax the shit out of them and then spend it on education and other areas of the economy. I can't believe you've done this. Interesting, huh? So I am confusion. Is this something that was actually done by a vape advocacy organization? That is unbelievable, man. Or is this something done to subterfuge the interest? I wonder. Don't get me wrong. I know vaping, as well as any other industry, once it becomes big enough, regulations are inevitable. What those regulations turn into, that's what needs to be ironed out, and that's what needs to be carefully monitored because if you don't monitor it, man, these politicians will rape you. I really haven't seen this many people in one place since they took the group photographs of all the criminals and lawbreakers in the Ronald Reagan administration. Moving on to Canada. Health Canada is going to use influencers to target you on social media because Health Canada says we need to get with the times. Well, people don't go and read newspapers anymore. They do all their stuff online. And when we publish stuff, even if we publish it in their local newspaper, nobody pays attention to it. It has zero impact on the population. So we need to find a better way to inform the public what we think they need to do for their health. Get fucked. Mm hmm And that's something that COVID has definitely changed all around the globe stupid is stupid does sir shut up dummy people got the opportunity to work from home and people like it and there's a lot of companies that are saying you know what we don't have to pay for the office space where all these people were coming to every single day 
We're not paying them anymore. We already got whatever technology we needed to implement. Well, let's just keep it the way it is. Let people work from home. Shut the hell up. People like it. The business makes more money because it doesn't have, they don't have to have the retail space. They don't have to have the actual office space for all their employees to go to. Now that's funny. Well, Health Canada took this little bit of knowledge and now they're going to be doing the exact same thing. Fantastic. Public Health Agency of Canada want to change your mind about how you see these federal institutions and they plan on doing it by hiring social media influencers. A contract for the campaign first reported by Blylock's reporter was first posted to the federal procurement website Wednesday. Imagine that! Posts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, all designed to use someone else's credibility to sell you a message from Dr. Teresa Tam. Yeah. The 44-page document detailing the contract says the posts should provide Canadians with targeted, timely, relevant, comprehensive, and accessible information to assist them in making informed decisions to protect their health. Well, that sounds good. I don't know about you, but I'm more likely to look at social media influencers for tips on restaurants to visit or day trips out to the city, not health advice. That said, based on the description, I'm not sure they really know what they are looking for with this contract. Oh, don't be fooled. They know exactly what they want with this contract. They have an agenda. They need people, and they're going to pick the appropriate people to convey that message to the public. Why do you think Google is as big as it is? They can carefully craft what search results are presented to you and which ones are carefully buried seven, eight, ten pages down the line. Even if you only influence a handful of people, a small percentage, you're tipping the scale. And don't think that just because it's Canada, somebody's not going to use this in a malicious fashion. Nutty as a fruitcake. Well, let's move on. There'll be a link in the description below to the Ottawa Sun. And you can read the article for yourself. However, if you do live in Canada and you're watching this, I want to direct you to tobaccokills.ca because there is a potential flavor ban and there is a nicotine cap that they're trying to do. So, you can very easily go on there. You can go on there in English or French and you can contact your MP and you can send them a letter to let them know about your opinion on the topic. Just do it! Once again, that's tobaccokills.ca. That was easy. How about down in Florida? Florida lawmakers look again at vaping regulations. Well, they passed the vaping regulations that they wanted to do, and the governor says, oh, no, man, this is that's overreach. So he vetoed it. And vapors were celebrating. It's like, that's a great day. We got a governor who actually stood up for our rights and says, no, the legislature isn't going to impose these ridiculous laws on you. Yeah, well... We have here a Republican who is now proposing, once again, to revamp their laws. They're always doing that because that's what their job is, right? Keep the laws up to date and current with what the needs of the society is. Makes perfect sense to me. Well, more than two years after the Surgeon General declared that youth vaping was an epidemic, Florida lawmakers are once again working on an effort to regulate the sale of electronic cigarettes and raise the age to use tobacco and vaping products from 18 to 21. Well, the federal law was already imposed on everybody in the whole country that moved the age to 21. However, those individual state laws and the individual local laws they still vary and they still have the old outdated information of 18 being legal. Well, we need to fix that. So that's what they did. 
They went in with Senate Bill 1080 and House Bill 987, and they corrected their laws to now conform to the federal statute requiring 21 to be the age where people are going are allowed to purchase tobacco products. Well, while they're in there, they figured, well, we might as well legalize this. And don't get me wrong, I like the idea of it. And I dug into it. And in Florida, you go to the different websites, you can actually go in to find out what lobbyists visited politicians and who those lobbyists were sent by. Jewel is one of the companies that has sent multiple lobbyists to the politicians in Florida pushing for this law. Well, surprise, surprise, huh? Because part of this law also would eliminate the ability for local towns, cities, and counties to have laws that are different than the state. And if you read through the actual text of the law, you'll find out that it's measured, reasonable, includes protections to prevent youth access, and fines and penalties for people that do sell to those who are underage. So overall, it looks pretty good. The problem is when you have legislators that are constantly trying to iron things out, you have no idea what might be slipped into this to change the entire outlook on this law. So if you live in Florida, you need to keep an eye on Senate Bill 1080 and House Bill 987 just to make sure that the American Cancer Society doesn't go in and say, I need you to drop these couple things from your legislation because it could, could totally reverse what impact this law has on society and on Florida residents. We're on a mission from God. Because you know the American Cancer Society is not happy with it. Nope. Susan Harbin, Senior Government Relations Director for the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, said her organization opposes Hudson's plan for a variety of reasons. Well, of course you do. <laughs> How about the American Lung Association, the American Heart Association? Are, are they happy with this? Nope. 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 American Lung Association, American Heart Association, other health care groups also oppose the House and Senate measures. Creating new regulations for the vape industry could take months or even years, the group said in a statement opposing the proposals. Well, it doesn't need to take that long. I read the language you already have. It sounds pretty reasonable. Some of it's not so good, but some of it's not so bad. That's typical of what regulations do. Yeah, there's there, there's some bad things in it, but they're not like catastrophic. Like the PACT Act enforcement is. No, sir, I didn't like it. And that's the reason why some of these representatives are now going, well, Maybe we ought to rethink these prohibitionist bans and these bans that aren't really doing anything other than keeping people from spending their money in this state. They'll just go to a state where it's legal or a country that it's legal and they'll get their stuff. Whoops. So maybe we ought to, you know, legalize it and tax it. At least we'll get some revenue out of the deal. Yeah. So here I have something for you guys today, a little op-ed, something you don't see too often anymore. Yeah, an opposition editorial. That's what op-ed stands for. Well, I'd, I'd like to read this one. The reader says, why they oppose any ban on vape flavors. Fantastic. And I know that this wasn't published recently, but I, I couldn't stop from using it this week because it's a great story. It says, I'm a former smoker and currently using a vape as a nicotine delivery system. I had my first cigarette at the age of 14. It wasn't a menthol, just, you know, a standard tobacco cigarette. I didn't do it for the taste. Hell, I remember coughing like a madman. 
So I definitely wasn't doing it because it was a pleasant experience. I was peer pressured into it. We all said that. And I take full responsibility for that. But after a couple weeks had gone by and I had smoked a couple more cigarettes, I started doing it purely for the buzz from the nicotine. Well, some people do it for that. I personally smoked my cigarette, my first cigarette, because I was working. It was three o'clock in the morning. All the drunks had gone home. Place was dead. I already got all my work done that I needed to do. And I knew it was going to be another hour or two before I saw the first person going to work in the morning. Standing there looking at all these cigarettes going. Well, coffee's not doing it. Let's see if tobacco does. What's the big deal? Yeah, all it took was one cigarette. I was hooked. That was it. Just one. Shut that baby up! Getting back to the article. It says, so at the age 14, I became addicted to the product that kills 480,000 people per year in the United States alone. Half a million people. Yep. Accurate information. He goes on to say, when I was 19, one of my friends gave me his old box mod vape, drastically different from the very popular and discreet jewel that everybody's attacking recently. He said, I had to go buy a separate tank for e-liquids. Then I was set to go. In the type of setup I had, you had to buy juice, coils, batteries, chargers, etc. All together, to get started, it probably cost me around $150 to $200. And that's with the friend giving me the $100 device to start with. After about two years of going back and forth between smoking and vaping, I found a strawberry and cream flavor that would be the flavor that made me quit smoking for good. I still remember at one point walking to my car to get another pack of cigarettes out of the carton. I always had my trunk. And then thinking, wait, you have a way better tasting thing in your pocket. You don't have to have any more cigarettes. I'm proud to say I'm three plus years smoke free. And that's due to electronic cigarettes and flavored e-liquids. So the reason I'm writing this is to show you that any flat out ban on vaping or just flavored vaping would totally be missing the issues currently in this industry. The biggest being that flavors are targeting kids. Yes, last year was the largest increase in underage kids using vape devices, but it was also the lowest teen smoking rate we've ever seen in this country. Smoking overall went up just barely, but teen rates were the lowest ever. Also, the cost for a full setup, not a pod system like Juul, is typically around 150 to 200 dollars. Not many high schoolers can afford that. These systems also use free-based nicotine, which takes longer to enter your bloodstream. And while it satisfies, satisfies the nicotine craving, it's definitely different from the buzz that a combustible cigarette or a jewel gives you. Ask a current vapor or longtime smoker. In 2017, Juul entered the market with ads using youth attractive models. A heavy social media presence and launch parties at which they distributed nicotine for free. Federally illegal at the time. If you look at teen vaping trends, this is exactly when the epidemic started. Juul also entered the market as the first salt nicotine device. This meant that they were putting upwards of 50 milligram per milliliter nicotine in their pods. And some have even been tested as high as 73 milligrams per milliliter. When I quit, I was about a pack to a pack and a half a day smoker and started at six milligrams, millili six milligrams per milliliter. So no wonder kids are being nicotine addicts. I currently work at a vape shop and tell my customers to specifically avoid Juul because they may become more addicted to nicotine than they were when they were smoking traditional cigarettes. Places like the UK have a limit on how much nicotine can be put into a vape juice. 20 milligram per milliliter is the most, I believe. Some European countries are even more progressive by taxing the higher nicotine levels more heavily. So there is an incentive to lose the dependency on nicotine. I also find it pretty interesting how different American science and British science view electronic cigarettes. 
There are hospitals in the UK with vape shops in them. While there are no smoking signs, say, have you considered trying an electronic cigarette? The British Royal College of Physicians finds them to be 95% safer than traditional cigarettes. I can only imagine this has to do with the major settlement agreement. The MSA that we've heard about before between the states and the tobacco companies. This was supposed to impose tighter and more restrictions on tobacco manufacturers and was signed by the five largest cigarette producers in the USA back in 1998. It also had those companies pay the states in which they operate a fee for the amount of cigarettes sold per year per state. But not much of that money goes where it's supposed to. States will collect $27.5 billion from the MSA and taxes in the fiscal year 2018 but we'll spend less than 3% of it on programs to prevent kids from smoking and programs to help smokers quit. No state currently funds tobacco prevention at the level recommended by the CDC. 29 states in the District of Columbia spend less than 20% of the CDC recommendation. So the states are literally profiting off of their own citizens buying a product we know is dangerous to their health. What I find very odd about this is everyone in the government likes to forget that the taxpayers then take on the burden of all the health care costs associated with smoking related diseases. This is probably why the UK government was much more open to the idea that maybe killing your own citizens isn't the best way to conduct yourself as a government. Since 2016, this industry has been regulated in production. And the companies that have prospered in this industry would never want their products to hurt the very consumers they make their living off of. Most people working in this industry are former smokers and would never want to sell a product that would cause someone to get sick or use something that could be more dangerous than traditional cigarettes. Raise the age to purchase to 21. Ban all flavored sales outside of licensed vape shops. Stop online sales. But don't kill an industry that's just trying to help people become healthier and live better lives. Overall, I believe banning electronic cigarettes or banning flavored e-liquids is one of the most dangerous things we can do, considering how deadly we know cigarettes are. If we still have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, please tell me how a flat ban on vaping or flavors is allowing me to have any of those rights. We vape, we vote, and I know I'm far from alone on this issue. Well, I concur with you on that. The only thing I disagree with this article about is the fact that they say in there that they should ban online sales. The problem with online sale bans are the people that are breaking the law aren't going to pay attention to them. And the only people that you're hurting with an online ban are the people that live in rural communities that don't have a vape shop, don't have access to a vape shop, don't have the means to get to one. So there are going to be people that are going to die because of the online sales ban. Today's day and age with the technology that we have, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get verified online, have the products delivered to your house, and someone personally hand the adult that ordered the products to prevent kids from having access to them. There's, there's no reason to do an online ban. An online ban is equivalent to a flavor ban. It's an intrusion on somebody's life, liberty, and their pursuit of happiness, their pursuit to a safer nicotine product. Well, let's go to Real Clear Health and their article, Policymakers, Stop Ignoring the Science on Vapes. And this was just published yesterday. There is good news for American smokers hoping to quit. A new study authored by researchers at Kansas University, California State, and San Marco University revealed when smokers switch to non-combustible alternatives such as electronic cigarettes, they are more likely to quit and experience better health outcomes. This finding should be no surprise to those who are familiar with past studies in electronic cigarettes showing their viability as a smoking cessation device. 
In contradiction to what this most recent vape study and broader research shows, government policies continue to discourage the use of electronic cigarettes. Instead of embracing electronic cigarettes as a healthier alternative to smoking, governments at both the state and federal level have imposed high taxes and regulatory burdens. If government officials want to improve public health, they should incentivize the use of electronic cigarettes so that smokers can have more readily available access to vapor products that are shown to aid quitting and do not have the same long-term effects as traditional cigarettes. The new study found that smokers who use electronic cigarettes had a significantly lower number of cancer-causing carcinogens present in their lungs than those who continue to use combustible tobacco. The researchers also found that 25% of smokers assigned to use vapor products were able to quit the use of combustible cigarettes completely after six weeks. A summary published in the Cochrane Library database of systematic reviews in 2020 also backs up the findings that electronic cigarettes were more effective at helping people quit smoking than traditional nicotine replacement therapies and nicotine-free alternatives. The six-month abstinence rate from cigarettes for people who used vaping devices was 10% compared with only 6% of people using nicotine replacement therapies and 4% of the people receiving behavioral support. The most recent study on carcinogens also reaffirms previous research that show electronic vaping products are far safer than traditional cigarettes. A recent report conducted by Public Health England also reconfirmed that electronic cigarettes are at least 95% safer than traditional cigarettes. While vaping products are not completely free from harm, they do serve as a much better alternative for people who already smoke. Studies have also shown that switching to electronic cigarettes could extend life expectancy. A study conducted by Georgetown University's Medical Center showed that switching to electronic cigarettes could save up to 6.6 million lives over the next 10 years. The report also concluded those 6.6 million people could live a collective total of up to 86.7 million extra years as a result of as a result of using electronic cigarettes. Wow! Switching to electronic cigarettes would also lower healthcare costs. According to the Progressive Policy Institute, per capita healthcare costs for cigarette smokers are around 9% higher than electronic cigarette users. The Institute calculates that just over 900,000 people ages 18 to 24 choosing to use electronic cigarettes instead of smoking would save $11.3 billion in lifetime health care costs due to the minimal risks they impose compared to traditional tobacco products. Despite the benefits of electronic cigarettes as a cessation method for smokers, both state governments and the federal government heavily tax and regulate these products. Currently, 18 states have excise taxes on electronic cigarettes with rates as high or higher than 90% in some cases. The stimulus package passed last December under the Trump administration included a provision that prevents consumers from receiving e-cigarettes through the United States Postal Service. These high barriers to consumption create the perception that electronic cigarettes are equally or more dangerous than their combustible counterparts. Continuing to regulate electronic cigarettes in the same way as traditional combustible products and sometimes regulate more stringently, governments are denying consumers access to a product that can improve long-term health outcomes. Wow, he's telling the truth. Not following the science on vaping devices could have more serious consequences. Smoking traditional cigarettes regularly is known to cause an extensive list of long-term health concerns, and electronic cigarettes have not been proven to cause the same negative effects. When it comes to the use of electronic cigarettes, the science is clear. They are not only safer, but they also help people quit smoking. 
Instead of creating a regulatory environment that de-incentivizes their use, policymakers should follow the science and encourage smokers to use a product that not only improves long-term health outcomes, but also encourages smoking cessation. This can only happen if states and the federal government create a friendlier regulatory climate. Unbelievable article. Real Clear Health is the website you're going to have to go to to find this article. But it just amazes me. The information is out there. I just recently published a video talking about how I just want one reporter, just one reporter with a little bit of decency, integrity to go out and tell the truth to the masses. Unfortunately, Derek Hosford, I love your article. You're telling the truth. You're covering all the information wonderfully, but I don't know how many people are going to find this article. Real Clear Health is not a major distribution website. Unfortunately, we need somebody at the New York Times or the Washington Post or ABC or CBS or NBC or MSNBC or CNN. Somebody needs to do a major report or somebody on a 60 Minutes episode is what we need to hopefully convince some of these politicians to do the right thing. And there is hope at the end of this tunnel. It's an eventuality. We've already got Rhode Island looking to reverse their flavor ban. And now Florida is looking to change their laws and regulations to put on the books potentially life-saving regulations. It's going to take some time for this to get ironed out, but it, it requires people to not give up. It requires people to keep fighting the good fight. Because even if this works for you and you successfully quit smoking, you need to stay an advocate to tell people the story of how it worked for you. That's why I started this channel. Because I want people to know that vaping does work. Stop believing all the propaganda that's out there because it's not true. Vaping saves your life. And it's an easy way for you to quit smoking. All it takes is finding the right device and the right e-liquid in a flavor that you want to use more than you want to use your cigarette. And anybody can quit smoking. It truly is that simple. Well, that wraps it up for March 26th, the Pact Act curfew. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And I'll be back next week with another Five on Friday Vaping New Science and Advocacy Report. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll catch you next week.